Corsair's new Vengeance RGB Pro Series DDR4 memory gives you blazing fast speed and dynamic multi-zone RGB lighting with 10 ultra-bright LEDs per module. Customization options are practically endless with the Corsair IQ software package and they're available with black or white heat spreaders. Find out more about the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro Series via the sponsor link in the description. Excellent! What's up guys, how's it going and welcome to Paul's Hardware. Today is a special video with JJ from ASUS. How's it going JJ? Doing good, happy to be here. I'm happy that you are here. For one, I like you and you're a friend of mine. For two, you work with ASUS developing and manufacturing these motherboards and I think you take a lot of pride in your work. Definitely do. Also we've got a new chipset for AMD B450, still the AM4 uh, socket, so it's still gonna work with first generation Ryzen, second ge generation Ryzen, as well as the APUs that are available on that platform. But we're looking at less expensive motherboards compared to X470, and we're looking at still a really wide feature set as well as the ability to overclock. So JJ, just a quick high level, any updates for B450 we should know about? And then also maybe uh, the three series of motherboards that we have here in front of us. Um, nothing super specific. I mean, for most intensive purposes, B450 is gonna be pretty similar to B350 uh, in terms of kind of all the kind of key IO spec and kind of layout and support that you noted. DDR4 support is gonna be a little bit different in terms of maximum frequency that's officially supported compared to X470. You can get a little higher. Uh, uh, yeah, well, no, as far as just the baseline frequency. Oh, so X470, yeah, you're correct in terms that it's officially, quote unquote, 2900 speeds. Uh, here it's a little bit lower, it's 2600 speeds. Okay. But overclocking support, actually, all these boards for DRAM is more in that kind of 3000-ish range. So nice. it's pretty much par for the course. So uh, all the way around, probably the biggest difference that probably to keep in mind is gonna be on the IO spec and some of the storage. And we can get into that when we jump in the boards. Cool, all right. And then uh, from ASUS, we have three primary motherboard lineups. They have the mainstream represented by the Prime B450 Plus right here. Uh, we've got the Tough Gaming series, that's represented by the B450M Plus, which is a micro ATX board. And then we've got uh, the highest end in this series, which would be the RO Strict, ROG Strix series of boards. This is the B450-F Gaming. Uh, where should we start? Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the Prime. All right, now all the boards we're talking about today are already available for sale. They launched earlier this week. So uh, the Prime B450-Dash Plus is up on Newegg. I believe it's it's also available on Amazon. One hundred and ten dollars mm -hmm. for yeah. this motherboard. That's that's quite reasonable. Yeah, and I think that's the whole point. You know, B four fifty chipset. It's the mid range series chipset. The whole point is to try to really give a good balance in terms of kind of the core specifications. So if you want things like USB three point one, Gen two, or Gen one, you still want Type C connectivity. You want M dot two support. Still full performance for PCIe Gen three. All those kind of key specs that you're going to want when you're building a system are still going to be present here. The cool part is, of course, still with B four fifty is you have overclocking support for the CPU and for the DRAM. Um, now with the Prime Series board, this is really, I'd say, more of a kind of turnkey experience. It's probably not going to be for users that want to jump straight into kind of overclocking, uh, you know, 2700X on this board, right? Mm -hmm. They're really probably looking to take advantage of the great inbox coolers that these CPUs already come with. Uh, you know, the Wraith Series actually are quite solid. They do provide a very competent experience in terms of really maximizing the XFR performance, mm -hmm. um, as well as the Precision Boost, which, if you guys don't know, those are now formally 100% baked in for second gen Ryzen in B450, where it wasn't necessarily 100% fully supported on B350, mm. um, and that was kind of one of the benefits of going from X370 to X470 was kind of full support for this latest generation of kind of how uh, AMD has fine-tuned some of the turbo technologies. But if we jump into the board perspective, um, right off the bat, I really like the monochromatic color aesthetic. It's clean, it's simple, it's gonna work with any type of build. You don't have to worry about continuing competing with colors. This board does add in from previous generations ASUS Aura Sync support. So if you drop in, you know, compatible memory, like here we've got this T-Force Delta R, you know, of course, maybe a strict series graphics, card, any of those type of items, you're good to go. But plus you can connect your standard stuff like fans, LED strips, chassis with LED lighting, anything like that. And some people also wonder about what happens if you only have one header. Um, you can get splitters now. You can get them from Newegg and Amazon. They're cheap. They're generally in the range of like about like seven to 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. And you can go usually from one to three or four additional headers. So it's a really easy way that if you want to have more RGB connected devices, you, you can do that very simply. I've also seen control boxes that allows you to take an input from the motherboard into the control box and yep. then splits it out to let you to control multiple things. Yeah, so that's a very streamlined. Um, so from there, uh, beyond the monochromatic color aesthetic, you've got all the standard kind of I.O. that you're looking for. You've got six SATA ports. You still have a full performance M.2 slot that fully supports PCI Gen 3 with NVMe support. So whatever type of M.2 drive you want to pop in there, you're good to go. Now this one doesn't have a heat sink, but we still do kind of focus on thermal isolation. So it's not directly underneath that physical by 16 primary slot. It's okay. above it. So we don't have to worry as much of from heat pooling, right? That we would have from our graphics card. And you also still even get our upgraded ISO audio design. Now, the software package isn't going to be as extensive as what we're going to see on the Tough Gaming and definitely not on the Strict Series, mm -hmm. but
but you still get a solid audio codec. Uh, this is uh, the 887 as compared to on the higher end boards. We'll go into the uh, 1220 like on the Strix. So there will be some improvement there, but overall I think a really solid board, you know, that's gonna give you a very turnkey experience. If you wanna drop in something like, you know, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 3, I think it's a perfect choice. And for APUs, which you noted earlier on too, you do have a full HDMI uh, 2.0 certified port on there and you're good to go. And last but not least, I would probably say is on the DRAM side, the board does support up to 3200 speeds and it will support our DOCP memory profiling option. So that essentially just means that like if you want to automatically apply the frequency, voltage and timings for your XMP enabled kit, just go into the UEFI, click that option, it will load that profile for you and you're good to go. It's a very simple process to do and also APUs are a great sort of upgrade path if you don't have quite as enough cash to buy a discrete graphics card right now. An inexpensive uh, motherboard, uh, an APU will give you the ability to play games right now, especially if you're just gaming at 1080 and all these boards have video outs in order to handle that. Yep, and actually I did want to last on one thing, one other update that we have for this generation the mid-range which is nice is that we did bring, bring over the Fan Expert 4 um, mapping technologies. Oh, cool. So very shortly, essentially what that really means is that mostly on previous gen boards, the fan headers were always responding to the CPU temperature, but now you do have GPU temperature sensing points so that if you want, let's say your intake fans to respond to the graphics card temperature, you can set that up within the Fan Expert software. Nice, that's a really cool feature. All right, let's move on. Next, we got the Tough Gaming Series. And just to point out, you guys, there are more motherboards in each of these lineups than what we're going over today. So these are just kind of representatives of the overall line. This is a micro ATX motherboard uh, currently on sale for $100. It is also available in a full size ATX version as well, the Tough B450 Plus Gaming. And um, that one's currently selling for $120. And JJ, you said not, not a whole lot of difference between the two besides the size. Yeah, exactly. If you're just looking for that ATX form factor and the benefits that it provides, or maybe just the aesthetic perspective from it, you pretty much shift over to the uh, non-M version, and like I said, it's a little bit more, but you get, of course, that little bit more expansion you traditionally get with an ATX series motherboard. Okay. Um, now, just as kind of a quick recap, most of you may not necessarily be familiar yet with Tough Gaming. It's still actually pretty new from us. This kind of replaces a previous pro gaming line that we might have had in our entry series segment. So from ASUS, if you're kind of looking for a quote-unquote true gaming series board, so boards that are designed from an aesthetic perspective, software perspective, and potential hardware spec, then you're going to be taking a look at Tough Gaming as our entry level, really designed kind of for first-time builders. Then we move into our Strix line. And then for kind of the users that are really the kind of the dyed in wool enthusiasts, the most passionate users, people that want the absolute best, we have formal ROG, but there is no ROG series motherboards for B450. They're essentially limiting it up to the top of the line, which will be the Strix B450-F. Um, so tough gaming though, I think once again, has a clean, nice stylized aesthetic. It's of course a bit more gamer-esque uh, compared to what you have with the Prime and still predominantly neutral. We do have a couple of things that are here highlighting some of the color tone uh, that we have kind of selected for the tough gaming line, which it's, is- It's sort of a nice alternative from the RGB thing, I think, yeah. I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one thing that we've kind of worked on very heavily is that for this kind of segment, because RGB tends to be a little bit more expensive in terms of kind of the overall accessories and ecosystem of parts, is that we have created something that we call the Tough Gaming Alliance. And so we've worked with a wide range of partners, you know, from Cooler Master to a team group with, uh, here you see an example of the Tough Gaming Alliance memory that we have that kind of is designed to match with this memory. There's uh, compatible fans, there's coolers, there's a lot of different items so that if you want to kind of build something that looks aesthetically complex, complementary that's all tough branded you can do that but when we take a look at the board itself you can still see it's predominantly monochrome it does have aura sync support so that if you still do want to add something in terms of the header just like we had on the prime series board you can do that you're good to go does the board have any light up elements itself or is it just the header uh just uh actually just the header on this board okay. that you're going to have in terms of light up uh, everything else is, is pretty much passive and this is going to be very similar to the prime series board you know you've got the usb 3.1 gen 2 support m.2 six out of six g ports on the board um pretty much all standard stuff Stuff that's par for the course. The one probably biggest point of improvement I'd say in an upgrade uh, from the Prime is going to be the audio design on this one. So this is the tough gaming audio and the biggest difference is the codec is essentially the same. You still get audio grade capacitors, a shielded codec and the same actual codec um, that's used on the Prime but it features our tough audio gaming package. And so what we did there is we worked with DTS and there's a custom software suite that's optimized for different game experiences. Mm -hmm. and you have a little bit more customization options to be able to kind of tailor the sound experience. Okay. Um, but all the way around, you know, very solid entry option option if you're looking to be able to kind of build something that's got a little bit more of a stylized focus. And uh, definitely, I think for a lot of users out there, they were interested in seeing a micro ATX version. So here you've got a micro ATX, but you've also got the ATX version too. Uh, and I was like the slightly smaller form factor of micro ATX while you still have a few expansion slots. And uh, yeah, nice little board here, the Tough B450M Plus gaming. 
And now onto the big boy, this is the ROG Strix B450-F Gaming. Now ROG, as JJ already mentioned, is usually like the highest end ASUS stuff where they do lots of tricky things and they experiment and do features that not everyone is gonna make use of. ROG Strix is sort of like taking that down to a still high-end gaming level, yep. but maybe not just all the crazy stuff that you might not actually use. Yeah, I, I definitely say you, you hit it on the head. It's I think really comes down to specialization. As an example, you might kind of jump into the cross here, which is on the X472, Chipset and an example of something not everybody's going to use is like the dedicated temperature inlet and water flow monitoring, right? That's built onto the motherboard, right? For the water cooling crowd, that's great, but for the vast majority of users, they're not doing that, right? Mm -hmm. um, or even, you know, the more specialized BRM options or the external bus clock generator so you can do BCLK overclocking. Um, these are all things that, you know, it's cool and certain segment of the audience might have, but really where Strix is, is that we're trying to offer you, I think, that best balance that if you're just an everyday gamer that wants a great experience, whether it's going to be overclocking, fan controls, audio and networking, as well as great aesthetics, that's all gonna be baked in and you can have a really great experience across the board, but at a definitely more reasonable price point. So, um, Speaking of price point, uh, this is currently available for sale for 130 US dollars. Yeah, so I think definitely as we kind of look through the board, it's definitely gonna feel, I think, like a more premium board and actually might be more expensive than that. First and foremost, you see the aesthetic, I think is great. It's got this monochromatic color scheme, so it won't contend and compete. Definitely, this is probably a board that's gonna be more squarely aimed at the target market that's gonna wanna go with an RGB type build experience and it's gonna fit really well with that. And of course, this also is gonna really complement our Strix series graphic cards, which feature the same kind of overall matte black stylized clean monochromatic color mm -hmm. aesthetic. Um, some of the cool things that you'll see that are gonna be different than the Prime or the Tough Gaming series is we've got the full integrated IO shroud, um, but we also have an integrated IO shield. Um, so that not only makes the build installation process more streamlined and easier, but a lot of people don't realize that pre-mounting the IO shield to the motherboard also significantly improves our EMI and ESD performance um, because we can actually create a much more bonded contact. And so that's beneficial because most issues that you have with EMI or ESD is going to be actually related to consistently plugging in devices. Mm -hmm. And so you plug most of your devices into the back plane. So that's an improvement that we have. Um, this board will feature integrated RGB lighting. So that will be here, the RGI. Okay. You will have two RGB headers on this board compared to the other boards, which only had one RGB header. So there's one here at the top of the board and then another one down here at the bottom of the board. So that's a really good kind of split configuration for how you might be building in the chassis. Maybe you want to run a splitter up here to the top fans or maybe front intakes and then maybe down here for you know anything from SSDs to other fans to LED strips your chassis whatever it might be. Are those both uh, 12 volt? Yeah these okay. are standard 4 pin 5050 you're good to go there. On the memory side this is just like those other boards they fully support up to 3200 base speeds and frequencies you're good to go and this pretty much like all the other boards that we talked about in terms of the ASUS or sync support is also uh, expanded to any type of accessory that plugs into the board so whether that's going to be graphics cards memory or anything else like that. Speaking of memory, I just want to point out, memory is very important with Ryzen. I've uh, talked about this many times on the channel, and getting faster memory is a great way to get the most out of your Ryzen configuration. And one thing I always point to is, once you've chosen your motherboard, yeah. go check the QVL list, the actual memory that the manufacturer has tested. And Asus does a really good job testing lots of different options. Yep. So you're gonna find a huge range of kits that they've tested. They've confirmed, yes, this works with Raven Edge or the APUs or what have you. And you know, you can plug it in, set up the XMP values, and you're good to go. Yeah, and to your point on the XMP values, just like we talked about with the other boards, this offers the same DOCP memory profiling options. Nice. So you can just go into the UEFI and set that. Um, now, in addition to this, this board does have some nice upgrades. We've got dual M.2 on this motherboard as composed to the other boards, which only have a single M.2 slot. So if you want to be able to kind of go into that higher end kind of RAID type configuration options, you do have available that. Uh, you do have full support for CPU NVMe based RAID configurations here also. So definitely a little bit more tuned towards that high, kind of higher end audience. Okay. Now, as we move into some of the other other upgrades as well. I think some of the targeted areas that really kind of uplift the board um, is going to be the audio section. So this board features Supreme Effects audio. So this is a significant upgrade compared to what we had on the primer of the Tough. So one, we jump over to pretty much the highest end chips that you can get, the S1220. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be much, much better performance for two channel, for multi channel, as well as line level input. So some people use on microphones, they use an analog microphone. Mm -hmm. Here, the line in performance on the 12220 is much better than it is on like the 800 series chipsets. So if you're going to game in stream or whatever and you want to have nice crisp clear audio from your mic. Yeah and in addition to that we also do have an extensive software suite. Um, we call it Sonic Studio. Sonic Studio allows you to go in and make customization per applications per games to everything from you know different types of frequency spectrum if you want to do vo vocal enhancement if you want to do bass uh, improvement if you want to add multi-channel audio but we also do have post-processing for the microphone. Hmm. So incoming audio as well as outgoing audio we can apply post-processing filters to kind of clean up noise or ambient environment noise things like that. 
So there's a lot of kind of subtle things that really help to improve the overall experience, whether it's gonna be you know music, movies, games, whatever it might be. You also do have uh, improved uh, audio grade components on here. So you got the audio grade capacitors, but you also have operational amplifiers in there. That pretty much squarely just gives you better dynamic range, higher volume levels, as well as the ability to better to drive higher end headphones. Okay. So that's gonna be for the front headphone and for line level out. So both of those are gonna be covered. Oh, nice. Uh, is there an impedance level for your headphones? Yeah, it, it is support up to 600, but without getting kind of too technical, you know, headphone impedance shouldn't always squarely be looked at. Your, your voltage actually that you're being able to provide from the operational amplifier is more critical. Okay. And so really our goal here is, is just trying to make sure that we can provide a, a more powerful delivery experience to the headphone. Probably if you're going 600 ohms, you probably really actually have like an outboard amplifier Most or something likely. that's yeah. that's really designed to really well suit that. But I think a lot of people, if you're lastly looking at this, are probably also looking at overclocking probably more seriously. They're probably in that higher end range of the Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7 series part. Mm -hmm. And here we do have an upgraded VRM. You can see that we've got a much beefier two-stage VRM heatsink that's going to be able to be more adequately cool and be able to provide a better experience. And this board I know is going to have something that you've used a lot from our boards in the past with our auto-tuning technology. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be able to go into the fiber optimization suite, you know, click a couple of buttons to be able to easily and effectively overclock your system with full real-time stress testing, this board has it for you. So nice. you can very easily overclock your Ryzen series part even if you don't have any knowledge to do so. So really all the way around, big upgrades. Uh, this one also does step up to an Intel NIC with our packet priority software, game first packet priority software. So you can go ahead and prioritize your streaming, your gaming, your downloading, your browsing, whatever it might be. Pretty much a, a lot of stuff really baked into this board that I really think be able to offer you a very high end experience, but without getting too crazy. The last thing I did want to touch on this board before we give a little bit of context to the mini ITX board, which has come out, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have interested, is you can do a little bit of aesthetic customization. This will actually come with two uh, covers for the actual FCH plate right here. And here you can see we've got kind of a colored cover plate and then we've got kind of the more stealthy kind of matte black cover plate. So the choice is up to you depending on how you want the board to kind of look and feel. Whether, but, uh, whether you embrace cool. whether you embrace or reject RGB. <laughs> exactly. You the, have options. The, the choice is up to you. Cool. All right, so for $130, uh, that's a very nice set of features. And of course, overclocking. I, uh, just, I just like that you can overclock with all these boards. Now you mentioned a mini ITX version. Yep. And I think with the mini ITX, that's going to be the Strix B450-i gaming. That's going to come in at just about $150. And it's going to pretty much have every single thing that we talked about here, including the dual M.2. So it's got an M.2 that's on the front of the board. It's actually in our audio uh, riser card. And then there's going to be an M.2 that's going to be on the back of the board. Um, it has illuminated uh, actually RG, uh, RGB audio outputs on the back of the board, which is something you've seen like on our higher end boards. Yep. It upgrades to this board in that it has an addressable header and a standard uh, legacy RGB header. And you also have the full audio design that we talked about is also going to be on that mini ITX board. And it's also got a very solid and robust VRM with a good quality VRM heatsink design. So pretty much the only thing that you would quote unquote be missing between the Dash F and the Dash I is going to be the additional PCIe expansion. But otherwise, all the really great things that we talked about improved audio, networking, the fan controls that we also touched on previously for the prime boards are all here in terms of, you know, temperature input mapping for the CPU, for the GPU, or for different temperature sources. All that stuff is on here. Even our quick uh, diagnostic LEDs, you know, we didn't touch on that too much, but in the higher end space, I think you can get sometimes more complicated builds. So it's still sometimes nice to be able to see a little four point LED for mm -hmm. the CPU, the memory, the graphic card, or the boot device, and it will light up to let you know if you may have an issue. So all that is going to be baked on into either one of these boards. So if you want to go for the really cool small form factor build or a high end build like this one, you're good to go. Awesome. And I have personally used the X470 version of the Mini ITX, which is very similar to the B450 version. And it's just amazing how much actual hardware is packed into that little seven inch by seven inch board. Uh, but guys, that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. JJ, thank you so much for stopping by today. Awesome to be here. And if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback specific to these ASUS boards, I'll definitely be checking out the comments. I'll try to respond to you there. And if you guys have any feedback on designs, features, functions, anything you'd like to see in the next generation series of motherboards from ASUS, uh, make sure and let us know. Um, definitely, I like to take that feedback back and talk to our product design team and see what we can't do for you guys. All right. Well, I've made JJ suffer enough in my garage where it's getting steadily warmer as the sun continues to bake us. So we're going to cut off this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy it and check links in the video description down below where I will link to these boards uh, as well as some other fun stuff that you might be interested in. Thanks again guys and we'll see you next time.